Mobile One. I think this is going to have enough poop to get that off. I do. It's a little mark to line your crank up. It's been so fun, so cool. Slides on the oil bearing. That interesting. Coming off really easy actually. I like it a lot. Ah, there's a hole in it. That's why I wouldn't go back in. I love seeing how different engines work. And usually, if somebody's going to engineer a diesel, they've paid their dues, they've put their hours in, and they're going to come up with something cool. And they're usually pretty reasonable to service. Just funny because you don't have to service diesels as often. They're built better and they're built out of better quality materials. If you like diesel videos like this and you have any interest in seeing what Caterpillar has going on, be sure to check out Adept 8. I think his name's Josh. I've watched a number of his videos. I really enjoy his stuff. He's a pretty cool dude. It's all I've done. This is the back side of the motor. It's a rear plate. I pulled this mounting bracket and then just some bolts. I'm going to do an unveiling valve cover. I'm going to use a valve cover as a perfect container to hold this in. Are these the exact same? They're all trumpets up. Yeah, these things are intense, but they don't have any oil channel in them. They look good. I mean, most everything in here looks good. It shouldn't have failed. truth this is probably where the compression was lost was a head gasket oh my gosh I thought that was on something this thing is absurdly heavy head gasket went with the head I don't see anything really obvious shoot there's my oil pan so I already pulled some of these bolts because I had to do it to get the timing cover off the half inch Socket. We'll just buzz through and grab the rest of these. I don't know what this is, but I should probably mark it. The one closest to the oil plug. Kind of a motley crew, isn't it? It's all mixed. It's gonna take a rag and wipe through this. There's just kind of this sludge, whatever won't drain. So much of auto repair is like being a dishwasher. I discovered what the little rubber plug was from. It's from the little gasket that goes to your rear bearing cap. So I need to get those studs pulled. So same old thing, put the nuts on the studs, just send it, start it, tighten, move it. Oh yeah, that came out all together. I like it when it does that. Don't be greedy socket. It's one of the seven deadly things, don't you know? You can see the camshaft down there in the bottom. It looks really good, the lobes look clean. It doesn't look like it's too bad off. The funny thing is, is I pulled the engine out and see how loose that is. And this is only finger tight, like it was backed out and basically hitting on the bottom of the oil pan. You can see that the washer, the retention washer, isn't crushed down at all. So it makes me wonder if this has been done before and how. But I'm glad I pulled the engine out just to catch that. I want to pull the oil pump, and that's all these gears are. You don't have to time this. So I just got the building laid out with my buddy. He came over and set it up in like this freaking rock star when it comes to doing concrete. Really good master of his trade. He could, could have done anything. He did concrete. That's scary. Nothing inside of this engine with all these moving parts. It should be finger tight. So glad to catch that. The bolt looks so much different too. This is loose too. This Dude, this is like seriously finger tight. I did not get secured well.
camshaft pulls out like that. Camshaft looks really good. A little bit of striping on the bearing parts. Globes look good. See the lifters in the bottom. Check out the lifters, they're just shining like a dime. They go in from the bottom. Wow, they're huge. Look at that. Not bad. Alright, let's flip her back over. Let's look at these cylinders. Get some lube in there somehow. Can is tiny, but it's lasted pretty good considering. I won't have to use very much. This is an extreme pressure lubricant. Perfect for stuff like this. All right, let's try again. Fun to be on an engine build show. So careful, it'd just be fun to throw caution to the wind and just go for it. You know, with constraints that motivate. The cylinders look rusted, tops especially. Listen to that. That uh, XPL is freaking awesome. Turn it easily now. Oh, that sounds gross. You're like, what about upside down? Uh, upside down, whatever. It's still more comes out than in everything. Everywhere that, that XPL, that spray, extreme green, everywhere I put it, <laughs> stuff just shines. It's awesome. The more I use it, the more I just really love it. For extreme pressure stuff, you can't beat it. So this is what I'm dealing with. It's just like all rusted out in the irrigation sat for years. You see how rusted these cylinders are? These sleeves? Yeah, we're taking this in, we're gonna do it. One of the things I've learned from Josh at the Depth 8 is that idling a diesel for long periods of time is bad. The diesel washes the oil off the cylinder walls and get shiny like this. I have the sleeves. Walks out, we'll do it. I bore scope this, but I didn't see any of this rust crap at the top. I flip her upside down, get this thing stripped. It's so easy now. Look at this. That spray is ridiculous. This stuff works so well. Should have expected that, but I didn't. Bearings actually look pretty good. It's just. The cylinders got rusted from sitting so long with this cylinder wall there. Line them up in a box. Please keep the crankshaft from sliding either way. The main thing that's needed was the sleeves and the piston rings. You just chewed the crap on that starting fluid. Don't use starting fluid, it's bad. It was half the weight. Right now. It's going to work. A lot of rust. Oil rings are just caked full of garbage. Oh, these are free floating. I don't have to bring the pistons with me. That's a good thing. On to number two. Yeah. Cylinder number two has a lot less rust. Yeah, that wrist pin's free floating. There we go. See that? That's why I pull the motor. That's actually the piston broke, like the divider that goes between. That'll kill your compression. You need a new piston. That's why it was biting in. I bet I didn't do any favors for the liner. Wow. That's normal. It is full of garbage though. Picked up a lot of rust and then the oil grabbed it. All right, you ready for cylinder number four? Only had one set with busted piston rings. There we go. Boy, he's gonna be a trick getting in. Cylinder number four, not too bad. So what we're looking at is there's a bunch of wear like divots. Like you can really feel it with your finger right here. But if you go across, you can see where there's a line. That line right there is what we're looking at. That's where it's really worn. And that's where you need compression to be the best and the strongest. Because when it comes up to the top, it superheats the air. And then you squirt the fuel in and that's why it goes boom. So you're squirting that high pressure fuel. But you can see the wear all the way around. 
These are hurt, that's for sure. I'm so glad I pulled this motor out. So this head gasket, yeah, it's coked up. You can see it failed right there. Yeah, this is the front. So this is cylinder number two. Cylinder number two had a failure. Head gasket wasn't too terrible. I think a lot of it was the cylinders. Cylinder number two is the cleanest. That's the one that had a broken piston. So this is getting washed all the time. Man, I wonder. I don't know how to change the sleeves on a block. There's not much I can do about that. So I gotta go to the machine shop. And it's like there's so many times where I've been like, I bet I could pull this off without going to the machine shop, and I did. They're so busy. And it's like I hate rushing them because I know they're busy. But holy smokes, dude, they, they work magic. Bonus footage at the end. Oh, uh, crap, dude. <laughs>